Aloha, it's William. And today we're going to talk about scanning devices and what they are and how they work and uh, all that cool stuff. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into our slides and check this stuff out. Okay, so first of all, with the scanning devices, okay, what's the scanning device thing? All right, well, so we said it scans an object, creates data that the computer can process. Okay, so you might think, um, well, it's just some Im an image, but it's not necessarily an image, okay? There's different kinds of scanning devices. Uh, if you think of optical scanners, okay, so that's taking visual light and then storing that uh, somehow on the computer in a file. But we also have another kind of scanning device, which is a card reader, which might not necessarily be based on the visual light, as we'll see. It might be based on, say, radio waves. All right. Let's see. So, and a bit more detail on the optical scanners. Okay, so again, this is light. Okay, so you got a digital image of an object, and uh, the light's going to be, you know, lighter or darker. Uh, there's, there's parts with color. And, um, what are we going to take a, a, an image of? So it could be uh, some printed text document, maybe it's something handwritten, maybe crayons, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, some kind of image, all right? It could be old newspaper, um, that kind of thing. All right, so this is going to take, uh, again, the, the light rays and uh, store those uh, different signals from the light rays as a document or file, okay? And then uh, we got different kinds of optical scanners here, different types. Uh, some uh, well, for documents, and some uh, flatbed ones, and then also portable scanners. Seems like uh, we get more and more portable uh, over the years. We're always it's on the go. Yeah, you don't want to just go over to the old Kinko's place and make your copies. Yeah, you got to do it yourself. Okay, let's, let's see more detail here on that. And um, for the document scanner, okay. So th these are uh, heavy duty, uh, typically large machines. And you can scan, it says multiple documents at once. Okay, so you can scan a lot of paper at once, basically. Um, so you load up, uh, you know, how, how maybe for, especially for uh, um, professors, so we're you know, making exams, so throw together a couple pages and we, you know, make lots and lots of copies. Okay, so that, that, that's what the document scanner is for. Okay, so it's more, um, uh, I'd say like, you know, medium-sized organization where you got lots of uh, paper flying around. Okay, so... How about this other stuff, a flatbed scanner, okay? So these, um, more like a thin device, semi-portable, I guess, and you put the document on a glass window, and then you're making some kind of electronic copy of that, okay? So this one, okay, it's not so much, um, what do you call it? So you're not making all these multiple, multiple copies of it, yeah. So it's a little bit different than the document scanner where you're just making tons and tons and tons of copies, yeah. And then last but not least here, okay, we have the portable scanners. And these, what, you, it's a handheld device, so kind of weird, yeah, a handheld device. And you just, in, instead of uh, putting, you know, your paper or whatever on the device, you, you take your hand and then you kind of drag it across whatever you want to make a copy of. All right, so super duper portable. Okay, so so yeah, kind of we're going from more uh, in place large machines that are bu -bu 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 -bu, uh, spinning out or are, are creating lots of documents. Okay, the uh, document scanner, um, and then another one is is the flatbed scanner. Okay, so that's more portable, more, more home use, maybe small business use where you're not making lots and lots of copies. Uh, of things. And then last is the portable scanner. So it's almost like you got a magic wand uh, waving around and making copies, man. I wonder if Gandalf can make copies with his magic wand. All right. 
At any rate, uh, let's, let's mosey on and let's see what we have next here. All right, so we'll talk a bit about readers, uh, card readers, that is. And so these, they, they convert whatever data you have stored in a card. So usually some kind of electronic um, data that's stored in that card. And then it's going to send a signal over to the computer uh, with the data uh, in a format that the computer can use. Okay, and all right, so what's a, a common um, card reader is the magnetic card reader. And uh, you know, you got encoded data on your credit cards, your debit cards, ID cards. Okay, so um, typically you take the card and you swipe it, yeah. But just kind of be careful about this, okay. There are devices where they can, they can capture the data on your credit card from a distance, okay. So you could just, you know, be walking down the street, mind your own business, and, um, you know, someone's got this device, and boom, they, they, they have your credit card information. Okay, so that's, that's usually not a good thing, right? Um, but, so th there are uh, wallets these days that are made with RFID shielding. Okay, anyway, it's, um, it has shielding so that people can't just read your credit card or other ID cards that you have. Um, I guess the drawback I realized the other day, um, I was going through um, what the, 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 the different, um, what the, riding the train over in uh, Tokyo, and um, while I was going up to get my card read, okay, it's got these little RFID cards that you can use to go through the ticket gate. And um, I had it in my wallet, which most people do, and then uh, my wallet's protected with the, the signaling, the RFID signaling. So then I couldn't read my card. So uh, I guess there's drawbacks. Uh, anyway, in Hawaii, we don't have to worry about uh, riding the train yet. But, um, you know, just look out for that, especially if you go to some kind of, um, say, computer science convention or high tech convention. Um, you know, you might want to think about leaving the credit cards at home or at least get a, a shielded one, a shielded, uh, what you call, um, wallet for that. Okay, so let's, let's, let's uh, mosey on now and see what we have next here. Okay, so barcode readers. All right, so the barcode, okay, it's that zebra stripe lines on many products that you see. And of course the reader uh, reads these barcodes with the, whatever information they have. And they come in two different styles uh, for your convenience. And uh, one, one type or one style is a wand reader. Ooh, sounds pretty cool. Anyway, it's a handheld device, and uh, you can use that to read the, uh, the product information on these barcodes. Otherwise, you got the platform scanner. Okay, so that's more a flat device. So you might see that at grocery stores or say at Long's, where they're just swiping it over the little counter there. Yeah. Um, so yes, yeah. You got so you got those two kinds there that they use. Actually, sometimes you got both at the same uh, stand. I noticed. Okay, so. What we got next here? Let's see. This next part. All right, so we're talking about uh, barcodes a little bit more here. And uh, hey, there's different kinds of barcodes. Go figure, yeah. OK, so you have the universal product code, UPCs. And another kind is the maxi code. And a third kind, QR, quick response code. OK, so there's different ones that uh, we've created for different uh, purposes. And let's, let's kind of see what's up here. Okay, so the UPCs, the universal product code, is probably what you're most familiar with. Uh, most products and stores uh, have this code. All right, if they don't have that code, or if the code doesn't work, you gotta punch in the numbers. Uh, so it's good when this thing works. Another one is uh, for packages. It's called the uh, maxi code. And um, so, yeah, so kind of keep track of where things are, uh, where they've been, and um, uh, I guess where they're going to some extent, yeah. Okay, so you got that kind of uh, code. And then one more QR, quick response code. And these are pretty cool. It's. Um, well, it's like a large square with smaller squares in them, 
has a little pattern to it. It's a black and white uh, pattern there. And it contains uh, whatever data or information about an item. And this started out uh, in the automotive industry in Japan. Um, and you, know, you kind of see them everywhere, right? So you know, there's billboards, street signs, um, tattoos. <laughs> um, just kidding. But at uh, any rate, so there's it, different kind of barcodes that use for different purposes there. OK, so let's, let's uh, mosey on. And we have a few more things to cover before we'll call it uh, a day here. And we have these RFID readers, RFID. OK, they identify these RFID tags up to several feet, feet away. So what's this RFID? <laughs> uh, RFID, or RFID, we usually say, radio frequency identification. OK, so there are these tiny, tiny chips. You usually embed them in something for tracking. Um, and these things have uh, been around a while. Okay, the kind of a prototype was developed in the Soviet Union back in the in the 40s. Okay, so many years ago. Uh, the really cool thing about this the RFID stuff is though. So you got this radio frequency going in there, and then the the chip has a material that uh, it it starts to power itself um, when it uh, these radio waves hit it or when it travels through a magnetic field. Uh, then it, it starts to power itself. So it's, it's um, when you don't have the radio waves going, then it's just kind of sitting there inert. And then uh, when it hits the radio waves, hit it, and bing, it, it, it wakes up and usually just sends back a signal. Hey, I'm uh, cow number 382 in the livestock, you know, something like that. Uh, but uh, you can store data in there as well. Okay, maybe. Uh, things about the health of the cow or, or things like that. Um, what else? I think Humane Society uses them to identify animals. Um, some concerns in the future, you know, if we use these to identify people, okay, you know, the uh, privacy uh, uh, issues there. So, but a really cool device uh, that we have, uh, even through uh, going through this, the train gates, okay? You have these little cards that beep, 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 um, that uh, help to you know, keep track of where you've been and how much money you got left on your card, I guess. Okay, so let's see our next, next slide here. Um, all right, so character mark recognition devices. So for these, okay, you might think scanner, um, you know, it's just visual, but also it's used to identify marks or special characters. Um, and uh, let's kind of see what else we got here. There's different types of character and mark recognition devices. So uh, lots of acronyms I'm going to throw at you all, so get ready. We got MICR, M-I-C-R, so Magnetic Ink Character Recognition is one kind. Uh, OCR, uh, so Optical Character Recognition. Okay, and then uh, OMR. Optical mark recognition. So you might want to talk about something about their MICR, OCR, or OMR um, if you got some spare time there. Um, so all these TLAs, so three-letter acronyms, kind of uh, too much, yeah. Okay, so let's see more about our uh, MICRs and our OCRs and our OMRs um, coming up next. All right, so let's see this next part here. And um, so magnetic ink character recognition. OK, so a lot of times these are used by banks to read uh, the numbers that are on checks. So I say funny looking numbers because I mean uh, not that they're funny haha, -ha, but uh, they look kind of unusual. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's used to, to read the checks that we have, those numbers on those. Um, Let's see, what is another uh, recognition device we have here? So optical character recognition. And uh, you actually have special characters on uh, different product tags. And uh, typically you have these handheld scanners in department stores. And it's visual, so you just kind of send out this little laser, beep, beep, beep. And um, that's to give you more information about uh, whatever 
what uh, I won't say garment, but whatever uh, product that you're uh, that you want to purchase. You know, try to find out more pricing and that kind of stuff. So don't say oh, oh, say oh, cool. Okay, so um, all right, so let, let's go to one more here. It's kind of an old school uh, device, or may I say, a device that's been around a while. It's still here. The OMR, so optical mark recognition. And uh, a lot of times these are used to read pencil, I guess uh, pen as well, but marks on multiple choice tests uh, are surveys. So um, one, one corporation is called Scantron, and it's almost like a, a, a household name. Instead of OMR, we just say Scantron. Um, but it's a well-known company, and they create uh, the, the, actually the tests, the forms, the scanners. Uh, typically, it's this green sheet. Uh, green and white sheet that you're marking your answers. Uh, so that was pretty popular back uh, way back when. And then, you know, even you ride on the airplane, you're coming back to Hawaii, uh, they have you fill out those forms. Okay, so I don't know if the Scantron is still reading them, but uh, what an uh, optical mark recognition device is. Okay. At any rate, so that is all for today, and uh, we'll see y'all a little later. Okay. <laughs>